Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about the Protection Paladin in World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic. The history of the spec, the expectations people will have of Protection Paladins, and the role that they will have as part of a raiding team. So when it comes to the history of prop paladins, they, like other hybrids, were viewed as being only useful for healing. Like if you're thinking about druids, if you're thinking about shamans, if you're thinking about paladins, when Burn Crusade launched, this was the widely held view by the community. Part of the reason, a really big part of the reason, is obviously how these classes worked in vanilla, where they weren't really that good for any other role. And with Burning Crusade, sure, Blizzard did make some changes, but they weren't significant enough changes to draw the attention of the community and change their, their minds. With Shadow Priests, Shadow Priests had the ability, uh, already had the ability to do a lot of damage, even vanilla, but they just had significant mana issues. Blizzard fixed that, and so Shadow Priests become very, very viable. In fact, they ended up being the best DPSers for quite a while in the Burning Crusade until people realized uh, what Hunters, what Warlocks and others could do in terms of damage numbers. But for a while, Shadow Priests were kings. Not so much when you're thinking about Druid or Shamans or Paladins, even though nowadays we would consider uh, Enhancement Shamans or Elemental Shamans or Balanced Druids as being pretty essential for any raiding team, but certainly not how things were back in the day. For Operation Paladins, it was particularly nasty because tanks are a valued raid spot in any guild, even to this day. It's very difficult to find a guild as a tank. It's one of the most difficult uh, things to do in the game. It always has been. And people were not willing to mess around with a tank class that, very, that only a handful of people believed could tank anything. It wasn't just a question, oh, is this tank better than the other? No. The view that was held by a very large portion of the community from the very best guilds to the lower end guilds was that Paladins couldn't tank anything at all. Part of it, Legacy of Vanilla. Part of it was a lack of uh, changes that could really make Paladins uh, seem very powerful to the wider community. We did get the taunt. And we did get a bunch of other talents that did help us out, but it wasn't enough. So people from leveling dungeons to 70 normal dungeons didn't believe Palins could tank anything. That's one thing to understand. It wasn't just like, oh, you can't tank raids. No, you can't tank dungeons while leveling, let alone dungeons at level 70, let alone heroics, let alone raids. That's how people viewed Prection Paladins. They viewed them through that lens. And... Even as we did more and more, even as people started playing prop paladins, leveling them up on the horde side from scratch, playing them, this view did persist for quite a while. And everything, every dungeon, every raid, every boss was a discussion. Everything had to be an argument to convince people that, yes, you can tank X boss or you can handle this dungeon. Now... Paladins were not in, in an ideal state when TBC launched. And you have to understand that a lot of people are still getting finding their feet. The Horde in particular was not particularly keen on Paladins. Holy Paladins were viewed as being very powerful. That's also something that contributed. You had a shortage of Paladins on the Horde side for a lot of guilds. And then you had the situation where Holy was extremely powerful. And Protection and Ret weren't viewed, viewed as being very powerful. And then you actually had genuine issues with the class. So Blizzard gave us a taunt. Great. But that taunt required the macro to use properly until Blizzard basically baked in the function of that macro into the actual taunt itself later down the line in Burning Crusade. Another problem was uh, something related to animation. So as a paladin, obviously you're going to cast quite a few spells, right? Consecration, you're going to cleanse in many situations all that kind of stuff, or you were going to judge. Now, the problem with this was an animation situation that existed for, in vanilla that carried over in Burning Crusade. So when, uh, you had do, when you did an animation that put your shield on your back, you couldn't block. Now, Burning Crusade dungeons, as we've seen so far in the beta, you can take a significant amount of damage while doing heroics. Or in raids, look at Karazhan and how much damage tanks are taking. I mean, sure, Karazhan's a joke because of low HP values, but the damage that tanks are taking, not so much of a joke. Um, so you have a situation where you have a tank that, when they're using a cast animation, they're doing this constantly for the sake of Consecration of nothing else, 
they no longer can block, which means that they're taking more damage, and on top of that, they're vulnerable to crushing blows. Pretty significant problem. Blizzard did fix this. On top of that, Holy Shield only had four charges. Improved Holy Shield got, uh, got added later on, not initially. It took a while for Blizzard to add Improved Holy Shield. I believe it was, what, 2.1 that they did so. And then finally, there was also this issue, especially on Horde side where we have uh, Taurian warriors to contend with. I mean, some of the main tanks, many of the main tanks in top guilds were Taurian warriors. Just look at Nihilum. Uh, paladins, prop paladins, have the lowest baseline HP of any tank. And back then, we didn't have the talents that we got later on. How long did it take a Blizzard to fix this? And the way they fixed it wasn't ideal. I mean, it was a fix, but it was a fix for people that were already raiding by that point. Uh, but Paladins have far lower baseline HP. And on top of that, you also want to get Crush Cap as a Paladin. You can. Warriors get it by default by just using Shield Block. Paladins, because Holy Shield only gives uh, 30%, very close to 35% due to the Librum. Paladins have to get a bunch of Avoidance, which means they end up with even lower HP when you're thinking about the Raid Geared Paladin versus the Raid Geared Warrior, at least initially. And then on top of that, on top of all of that, the gear that Blizzard designed for Prop Paladins was absolutely garbage. You had lower HP, you ha and you had a bunch of stats that were not that great. Granted, you could use offset pieces to make up for that, but you still, ha you still had lower baseline HP. And you, if you're playing on the Horde side, you're competing with Tauren Warriors who have, on top of the higher baseline HP that Warriors have, by default, they have 5% extra HP because of their racial, which creates uh, which created further problems. Basically, Paladins had the lowest HP and because of that, the lowest survivability of any tank in the game. And then came the Zulaman patch, where Blizzard, the way they fixed it, is they changed one of the talents that we didn't bother using, they give us 10% extra stamina. Now, this wasn't a great way of fixing it because it still meant that on a lower gear level, uh, we still had lower HP than warriors in particular. Like, warriors are the best tanks by default just because they have the best survivability. They have a certain amount of baseline threat, in particular because of Sunder Armor, and they have the best, uh, they, they can get crush cap by default. That makes them the best tank tanks if you're talking about having no gear. But with this talent change, Perection Paladins ended up having very high HP. Not enough to compete with Tauren Warriors or Tauren Druids, but close enough. And that's when things started changing. But the problem is, that change got implemented towards the very end of the first year of Burning Crusade. So by that point, many people had cleared, if not at least attempted, uh, Black Temple and Mount Hydro. And opinions were fairly entrenched by this stage of Burning Crusade. And so Paladins, the only role they really, um, they really had in the eyes of a lot of people, people even at this stage, even when there were some certain Paladins like myself who were tanking every raid boss in our path, even in that kind of situation, and we were doing so with ease. Like, I'm not, when I'm saying that we tank bosses, I'm saying we tank them without uh, a worry. I, when people didn't think you could do a heroic, I was doing all of Karazhan, Mag, and Gruul as a tank. And I didn't have the very best gear in the world, worth, worth saying that. And so did other Paladins. It was never as much of an issue as the perception of it was. We could tank. We could tank just fine. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, warriors might take less damage, all that kind of stuff. They have cooldowns. That, it was more of a perception issue than an actual problem. And some Paladins... We're tanking Black Temple, some were tanking Mount Angel, but in the eyes of an enormous number of people in the community, especially in the very best guilds, with few exceptions, was that Paladins, the only thing that they were good for, even after a year of Burn Crusade, even for all the changes, the only thing Paladins were good for was AoE tanking and Hydral, and when Sunwell Plateau came out, doing Felmist and Moro, doing AoE tanking on Felmist and Moro. And that was in very few Paladins, main tanked anything in in Sunwall Plateau, very beyond Kalagos, if even that. Very few Paladins tanked Brutalis or Felmist or anything like that. Very few did Illidan, even on farm kills. And that was just the situation. That ho that's how Burning Crusade ended. Going from a tank that was viewed as being completely use useless in a raid to a tank that was only really good 
for a we thank you for my title and for Felmist and more. That was it in the eyes of a lot of people. Exceptions that exist. I personally tank, main tank pretty much every boss in the game. Even on progression kills. I main tank Teladin. It wasn't an issue. And in fact, there are certain advantages that come from having a Paladin. That came from having a Paladin main tank on Illidan, for instance. Because of the way Holy Shield, improved Holy Shield work, worked versus uh, using Shield Block. But in the eyes of a lot of people, that's how it ended. And that legacy would carry over to private servers. In fact, this is how many of them are still viewed to this day. And, and in fact, this is how many prop paladins that play on those servers, this is the view that many prop paladins embrace, that they are an off tank, that they are an AOE tank, that they are there basically to tank the packs that they can or on bosses where we need an AOE tank, that they are simply there to handle any kind of AOE tanking and then some trash tanking but that they don't really are, they're not really there for the purpose of tanking bosses. That's the expectation with prop paladins. You can tank Kara, or most of Kara's end, or the trash and Kara's end, and speed that up considerably, but in raids, you might tank a mob, you might tank some AoE packs, and then you obviously AoE tank Hydral, but you're not really gonna uh, tank many bosses. Many people still cling to the belief and the expectation when BC Classic comes out will be, oh, you can't tank Roll or off tank Roll, you can't tank Void Reaver, you can't tank Gurtog Blood Boil. Those will be things people will keep saying over and over and over again. Now, let's be very clear on this, on a, on a particular point. The expectation exists for a reason. It does need, require a certain gearing and understanding how to gear your character up to actually do those kind of things. At least with Gruul off tanking, that can be a bit tricky, right? But an MD or two, you know, maybe a mana pot st uh, standing in some cave -ins, no fucking problem. I did it on the beta, I've done it on private servers. Honestly, I was a bit surprised of doing it. Then Void Reaver and Gurtok, honestly, even those bosses were not that challenging. The easier, the easier thing you can do, just literally start as the first tank on those bosses and then have those bosses sw swap to other people. Or have enough spell power and have a decent enough group that can support you. And this is important for any tank, right? This is important. Having a decent enough group, having spell power totem is important to you uh, as a prop paladin. It just as it, it is important for a warrior tank to have wind fury. I mean, no one would argue with the idea that, hey, a warrior tank needs wind fury. Same with the idea with a paladin tank who wants a spell power totem, who wants to be in a group with a shaman for that very purpose. The expectations, the expectation of the community is that you're going to be an AoE tank that can tank uh, Void Reaver or Gurtok, and that you're really the off tank. But that's not all paladins can do. Now, I've played the paladin tank from that perspective. On retail, I main tanked quite a lot of things, but I also did this. On private servers, I did a lot more of this. Part of it was because of the, the tuning of those private servers and the way they handled gear. So Paladins are a very gear dependent tank. That's one of the main things about them. With gear, you can be very powerful. But the problem with private servers is mo many of them, they have pre 2.1 gear. What does pre 2.1 gear? Well, it's this idea that, oh, you know, these, this gear has lesser stats. Now, it doesn't really have that much of an impact for a lot of people because you still have the crafted gear. That's not affected. That's still very powerful. But what it really ends up being is uh, raid gear, quite a lot of pieces of raid gear that drops in Karazhan and Tier 5 is less powerful than it ends up being after 2.1. The one, the people that are affected the most by this, production Paladins, because it means your tier gear is absolutely crap. Now, this wasn't too much of a problem on retail because fret wasn't an issue on retail. But it is an issue on private servers because of the way the scripting is, the way abilities works, the way spell works. And you will have quite a lot of people from private servers with that experience who are going to come over in retail and say, oh, this is what the prop paladin can do or not. But that's not going to be realistic realistic for how things are going to be in TBC Classic for two reasons. One, we will obviously have 2.1 gearing, so our tier pieces will be better. Now, this the, this wouldn't change our survivability, but what it does change is our fret, because obviously our tier pieces are our fret pieces. Because um, usually, as a tank, you want to go for as much survivability as possible. That's the reasonable way of approaching things. Then 
uh, then worrying about front. That's the way you operate. If you see a tank focusing on fret first versus survivability, they don't know what they're doing, quite frankly. And so many tanks get this wrong. Doesn't matter what class they're playing, but so many tanks, especially paladins that embrace that off tank role, that's what they get wrong. But the experience so far in the beta has vindicated my perspective, the one I've had for a long time, the one that I've used, be it retail or private servers, and right now in the classic beta, your fret is not a problem. Your fret in classic is very strong as a prop Allen, and the issue is your survivability, right? If you're deliberately screwing yourself over by going for fret versus survivability when you have such high levels of damage and when we can do pretty high fret even with full survival gear, then obviously you're doing something wrong. But tier pieces do matter because tier pieces with 2.1 itemization have both good survivability, at least the helm, chest, shoulders of tier four, because that's what we're gonna get at the start. Um, tier pieces have both good survivability and they also give you good fret. That's what matters for a prop island. So you won't end up having fret issues and your survivability will end also end up being very, uh, very high as well. Easily on par with a warrior. Uh, though with druids, that's gonna potentially end up being a complicated, uh, complicated business. And so the question of the role of the prop paladin, well, what is it in a raid? Right, what can a prop paladin do? Sure, you can just embrace the AoE tank role. But AoE tanking what? Are we talking about just more Grim Tidewalker? Are we talking about the Hydro Trash? Or are we talking about more? Because the thing about prop paladins isn't just the fact that they can tank multiple mobs, hold fret on multiple mobs, is that they can do so while taking significantly less damage than either warriors or druids. How the production paladins manage that? Well, it's through two talents. One of them is redoubt. So redoubt, when you get hit, you have a chance of getting extra block charges. And because of these block charges, because blocking an attack will reduce the damage you're taking, this will make it uh, far easier for you to tank multiple mobs. In fact, because of this one talent, you can tank more mobs than either a warrior or a druid. Like let's say you're tanking 10 mobs, a warrior or a druid is tanking four. You can tank 10 mobs and you will end up taking less damage than that warrior or druid, significantly less damage because of this talent. And then there is art and defender. A lot of people think art and defender, especially those that have the view of paladins and off tank, a lot of people think, why, why do I need art and defender? You know, I can drop it, it's not that useful. Let's, let's back into Retribution and get Sanctity Aura. This is what you see a lot of prop paladins do, actually, on these kind of servers. This is what they'll argue for in favor. But this is absolutely the wrong idea. Art and Defender is exceptionally useful for the sake of trash tanking. Let, boss tanking, you know, it's, it's kind of discussion. You need a certain level of stamina to really make it useful for the sake of boss tanking. But when it comes to trash tanking, it's absolutely essential because it means when you get in those situations when you're dropping low in HP and you will have a lot of those situations if the beta is anything to go by. Um, if you get in those kind of situations, you give your healer or healers an extra, uh, extra breathing space so they can heal you in in a moment when you end up taking significantly more damage. But this but this goes back to the gearing discussion. In order to make Arden Defender useful, or make, make it or without useful, to playing to your strengths, you want to stack as much stamina as possible. This is something quite a lot of people don't understand. I've seen prop paladins gemming for spell power. Absolutely the wrong decision. Gem as much stamina as possible. Get the crush cap, make yourself immune to crushing blows. That's important. It's also important for the sake of AoE tanking. The reason it's important to get crush cap or close to a crush cap, even when AoE tanking, is because if you block, dodge, parry, or miss every blow that's coming your way, you will take significantly less damage. So crush cap is important. Ardent Defender is important. Redoubt is important if you're going to be an effective AoE tank. And not just do a lot of fret, but also hold aggro. But imagine this, you have a tank that takes significantly less damage when tanking multiple mobs, and you have a tank that's capable of doing a lot of AoE damage. What can you do with such a tank? Sure, you can just use him in the traditional role, or you can push the envelope. You can push things 
fall far further than many people might imagine. You can pull multiple packs of trash mobs in raids that would otherwise maybe require CC or taking them one at a time, but you might be able to pull multiple packs of trash mobs and just AoE them down. Go in there, do a consecration, wait for that consecration to tick down, have a warrior, an ESU or a druid tank or a DPS warrior do a demo shot. It's very important to have demo shot. One of the things worth talking about there, uh, reducing the attack power of mobs is one of the problems prop paladins have. We don't have a way of doing that, so we depend on someone externally doing that. Might be seen as a weakness, but honestly, in a raid, you will have someone capable of doing that, be it another tank or a DPS warrior. You will at least have an arms warrior in a raid. So anyway, pull a lot of mobs, get the demo shot from someone, maybe get the blizzard from a mage or a frost trap or anything like that, Either face tank them or AoE tank them, get a lot of fret, and then seed these mobs. And the seed, this will kill them very, very quickly. And you will be able to do trash much faster, and you will be able to do raids much faster. But it doesn't just end with trash, either. It's not just like, oh, we can pull these trash packs and we can do this, all of this considerably faster than otherwise we would be and save time. That's not just, that's not all there is to it. You also have the question of bosses, right? Well, on a boss, well, if we can have a tank tanking multiple things at the same time, can we maybe drop a tank? Because, you know, you take a boss like Carafres. On Carafres, you typically want to go with multiple tanks because you have different bosses that need to be tanked. But what if you can drop a tank, maybe even two tanks, maybe push that envelope even further and go with as few tanks as possible? That will also help speed up your raid. Maybe you can have a situation where uh, you two tank Void Reaver or you two tank much of Tempest Keep. Maybe not all of it, Alarm might require multiple tanks, but you have those kind of options. And that's the role people should embrace for the Prop Paladin. A tank that can speed things up, do a lot of things that other that people didn't imagine back in the day. People haven't imagined even on private servers largely because they're also overtuned as hell, things that's uh, slower. It, it's kind of weird, actually, how things are in comparison to private servers. We have mo much more damage than on those servers, even though the HP values can be similar. And when those HP values are lower, look at the case of Karazhan, things just get destroyed very, very quickly. So in that kind of context, um, with, with that kind of tuning, things can end up being far faster if you have a tank that's willing to push the envelope, that's willing to go further and do those crazy stunts instead of just embracing that idea of being the AoE tank. Because at that point, when you're doing that kind of stuff, when you're doing those kind of pulls and you're pushing the rate further and further, you're not really an off tank. You're a main tank, right? Who tanks the boss doesn't matter. That's not where you're going to waste your time in raids. You're going to waste hours on trash. Karazhan can be done either very quickly or very slowly, dependent on your paladin. TK, SSE, same deal. B Black Temple, Mount Taijo, same affair. It matters how a prop paladin plays, and it matters how he views his role in a raid. Because if you're not going to view yourself as the guy who has to step forward, and you're not viewing this, uh, yourself as the guy who has to, in a sense, I've called it quasi-raid leading, the guy who's doing the polls, the guy who's handling the packs, if you can't view it, then your raid is going to be much slower than it otherwise could be. My personal perspective, my expectation, personally, is that for really good guilds, that's what they're going to end up doing. They're going to try and cut the number of tanks and obviously the number of healers, and they're going to try and do things as quickly and efficiently as possible. And that's where a prop paladin can really help a raid team with.